I would like to briefly uh, touch upon one major uh, reason why people even get into narcissistic or abusive toxic relationships of any kind without knowing that they are getting into one because they have their own traumas which they were not healed of they were not aware of they did not even sometimes they did, they know a little bit but they don't know how to what to do about it how to heal or uh, a lot of people don't even know what healing means so i would like to uh, briefly talk on what trauma exactly means so trauma is something where a, con- a position a weak position a helpless position where you've been put mostly it, it begins in childhood for a lot of us because that is where we are the most helpless heavily and entirely dependent on another adult or other adults to take care of us our safety our basic needs our general uh, existence well being that is where it all begins none of us extremely rarely do we find people with very healthy stable childhood even the lo- even the kind of families that look good on the surface usually they have a very underlying toxic element to it i'm not uh, i'm not trying to draw any statistics here but i've i've seen and i've gone through a lot of papers myself to un- to come to this conclusion that vast majority of our wounds of trauma come from childhood now what is trauma like i said any helpless and hopeless situation a weak powerless position where we are put in and this happens consistently where there is no voice for us there is no respect for who we are there is in fact a kind of contempt or hatred for who we are actually as long as we behave do say as uh, as the adult is determining and we are just following them it's all happy the moment we try to be ourselves authentic there is always the no two people are same no two people are never same not even the twins of same gender born together are same so this is one thing people have to note this and this inability to accept that people our own children can be different from who we are triggers insecurity in the parent who themselves have been through something and they never process their own insecurities very sad these people become parents and then they start using the same power dynamics and toxic dynamics that they learned from their own examples bad examples and they start using it on their children who are powerless children depend on adults parents are the only people they depend on for a really long time in their lives and then siblings come along and they don't know how to be a healthy parent first of all because they want to treat children as if they are supposed to be what they ask them to be like a mud that is to be molded into a com- structure some kind of a structure anything different from that is commented upon put down uh, verbally abused belittled uh, made you are made to feel like you're worthless every human being inherently is of worth is worthy of love dignity respect this is sim- this is really that clear but in real that's not how a lot of people treat other people including parents treat their own children that is where the toxicity comes from because there is there is, there is this desire to mold other person according to what they want why because they are seeking control when you say someone should be the way i want them to be instead of being who they are authenticity they are already taking the power role the control the control role which means they are suffocating you <clears throat> they are making you feel helpless you don't have a voice you don't you cannot take a stand you are terrified of what will happen if you stand up to them if you oppose to them if you say no or if you if you cannot be what they want you to be 
so this ingrained set of behaviors happen as defense mechanisms because we are to protect ourselves these are all unconscious you might be a very 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 young child but as soon as you notice that your environment is like this that you are supposed to play to the tunes of somebody else and otherwise you will see the wrath of this person you will adjust yourself accordingly why for your own survival for your own existence safety and these structures become ingrained in you become automatic because you've been there in what 15 20 sometimes even more than that years of your association with these people and then those the, those kind of abusive people don't come alone they have their own families parents side mother side father side uncles aunts and then their friends and then there is the other relatives and then there are since all these are unprocessed you keep encountering these kind of people in your school your colleges your peer your friends your workplace your dating patterns you see them everywhere until and unless you process and heal it you see them everywhere why because these are the same structures you have somewhere ingrained in your subconscious for your survival for your existence as a child but as you grow up the conflict becomes more the trauma becomes amplified because now that you grew up let's say beyond 15 even even during teenage there is a lot of conflict as to we are we are already trying to figure out who we are both physically and mentally emotionally and our own role in this world in the society and on all that at the same time we have the structures that define us for our basic survival and then there and then comes society peers values movies everything that's influencing our ideas you don't know what to pick what not to pick you are you are half lost by the time already but you don't know that you may be performing well in schools or performing well in other things and it doesn't look like you are suffering sometimes because you are doing well in the in the world in the in the standards of the world and then there are people who directly become non functional or dysfunctional or self sabotaging that it's visible that they cannot function as a healthy human being because somewhere something is always not fitting right for them they can't study well their attention spans are affected their emotional dysregulation is obvious they have this temper tantrums they cannot express themselves healthily they cannot they don't even try then there is this lack of clarity of who they are and who they are not and they are easily driven this side and that side and that side in this side and they seem lost obviously but irrespective of how it looks in the physical standards of the world vast majority of us are walking around with our unhealed traumatic wounds this is the place where these kind of abusive toxic relationships come into picture because this trauma of pleasing the other adult in order to gain their love affection attention to fulfill your basic need it becomes an inherent thing in us it becomes an automatic behavior in us and so ingrained that we become happily people pleasing and the society tells that extroverts are better than introverts they are more socializing and so it's good an extrovert behavior being socializing is something again the culture forced a lot of people to be because that is more acceptable not necessarily because it's healthy because the people pleasing and the linking of other people to define our identity becomes a common very natural thing in extrovert in extrovert behavior so this kind of behavior the main behavior is people pleasing you ignore your own needs and self just to be surviving just to be bare minimum safe you go and uh, please the other adult in the picture somewhere they created a power structure where the other adult has power or at least they created the illusion of power that now you are more you are more focused on pleasing that person okay entertaining and getting their approval for who you whoever you are the way you dress to what your education you get to how you walk talk laugh 
what you drink, what you eat, where you go, what you don't do, who are your friends, who are your not friends and all, whatever it is. Your inner self-esteem has been damaged at an early childhood level and it has been so unconsciously ingrained and become automatic and the society perpetuates, yes, uh, perpetuates the same behavior on and on again through culture, TVs, movies and uh, all these fake studies that uh, <clears throat> that they put in your face that this is better, that is better. I mean, do not let you, they do not let you figure out who you are on your own. <laughs> they are terrified of it themselves, the whole society, whoever built these structures. And then they tell you, you do this, this is better. And every time it, it, it comes to people pleasing and appro seeking approval from someone else for your own self-esteem, to feed your own uh, psyche, your own healthy self-esteem levels were broken so you try to fill them through external means that's what trauma does to an individual they they are the breeding grounds now imagine a extremely selfish person who is only interested in themselves and want to take advantage of you and objectify you has come across and they say hey you have to seek my through their behavior words whatever they they show this extreme confidence fake but uh, and you immediately like the confidence or immediately like that they are so fun and adventurous and all that liveliness because you have no confidence. You have broken self-esteem, you are still totally lost and then they come with all these fancy things and confidence and laughing and very socializing and you fall for it. It's mesmerizing. That's exactly the idea. Like a magician, they mesmerize you with tricks and they come along and in order to for them to be a part of your life, they make you jump through hoops. Do this, do that, please me, seek my approval, don't go to anybody else, just me, just me, just me. Fill me with attention and affection and all, everything, give me, give me, so that I'll take and take and take. You're already fully prepared for that role. Watch out, uh, this is the pattern most of us follow. Again, society normalized it, especially in women. Someone else is an authority. By, den, by gender, by default. So blindly listen to them. That is not how it works. That is something societal created for their own benefit. As an individual, healthy self-esteem works in a different way. Approval, people-pleasing doesn't really have to be that toxic. But these these are the patterns of behavior which make us go choose these kind of people in an attempt to please them and gain their approval so that they can love us, so that they can like us, so that they can give the attention we always wanted but we never got. As child we know when we got attention, why we got, how were we rewarded, how were we punished. We know subconsciously. Our body remembers. So it becomes an automatic second nature response in us. Now we are already alert, tuned to that kind of toxic behavior. Okay, looking for rewards and signs of punishment. Trying to maximize reward and not, uh, not to be discarded or avoided or abandoned. And try not to be getting punished by them, both verbally or physically. And in that dynamic of running after basic survival, all of this happens subconsciously. And all of this is even perpetuated through <clears throat> cultural sources. TV shows, movies, the way they design women's roles and uh, all the media out, out there. Even a lot of social media that we are all falling prey to. It's all based on toxic femininity and toxic masculinity. Don't fall for it. Because these are the structures that enable toxic behavior and gaining toxic partners and perpetuate more and more and more abuse in the whole society. And then these external confirmations through culture and society and religion, whatever tags we were told to follow, these structures that come externally also perpetuate and encourage and make it seem normal so that we are blindly tolerating the same helpless child becomes a hopeless adult thinking there is no other way to live their life, totally accepting and submitting to 
this authoritative, this blind toxic patterns that were rubbed on us. So that they won't even seek healing, they won't even seek help, they won't even get out there and see, hey, I want to operate on my own authenticity. Let's say, according to the society, I fit in all the boxes of the, you know, a good partner, good wife, good husband, whatever. But the environment here is too toxic. It is not healthy for me at all. I mean, I can see it every day, day in, day out. And people cannot process the reality of what's being fed to us and what is the reality of within us. And they stuck, they get stuck. As long as you are not unwill, you are not willing to heal this trauma, even though sometimes people note that something is wrong, they do not want to address it. Again, because of the basic survival thing. Oh, I don't have anything. I only have the parent or husband or this friend or that cousin. I, I, if, if without them, I am nothing. Without them, I feel to, I feel like I'm falling apart. Somehow, your own identity, self worth esteem, self-respect, your existence is linked so much, deeply ingrained with somebody else in existence in your life that you are willing to sacrifice your own self-worth, existence, respect, boundaries and everything that's healthy about you just to get a little bit love or kindness from them. A little bit. They only give, they, they only give this much and you know, you all know that. Whoever has been in an abusive relationship of any kind, they know what I'm talking about. They barely give any. And they leave you broken and empty. And the society cheers you. Because hey, what a nice, kind-hearted, what is it called? Long-suffering. Long-suffering martyrdom is seen as a very uh, virtuous quality. No, it's not. It's saying... Abuse me, do whatever you want to do, treat me like a doormat, throw me out of, into the garbage once you're done damaging me, but I will never stand up to myself because I am not interested in my self-esteem. I'm not interested in protecting myself. I'm not interested in healing so that I can move to go or move on and go on to live a healthy life and begin living healthy and being around healthy people. So this applaud from external sources by saying, hey, what about your children? Hey, you, you're being too strong-headed for a woman. You're being too emotional for a man. All these external labels of judgment, contempt, condemnation, rejection, alienation that comes from outside will only confirm the alienation that you have been already went through as a child inside. So you just go ahead with it. Society approves, so it's good. Maybe I'm safe. Maybe I'm, my, my survival is not that uh, that much at stake. No, it is at stake and you know it. Because when push comes to show, this person is going to throw you out and you will be left with nothing. Right now you don't have nothing even. If you don't have something healthy to hold on to in your life, you really have nothing. Doesn't matter how successful or materially fulfilled you are or how good you look or how fancy clothes you wear and all that privileges. Some people are in privileged position. Whatever they want to think about them, it's fine. But if you do not have the value of who you are and if you do not have anything of value in your life, anybody of value in your life that's healthy and constructive, you really have nothing. So it's about us. Are we willing to heal? Are we willing to break these trauma-bonded patterns that were forced on us and ingrained in us as a child in a helpless state? And now that we are no longer that child, why don't we stand up for ourselves, figure out who we are, let's throw out of the window whatever others told we should be and then throw out all, the, all through the window. Start to learn who we actually are and then stand up to it, own up to it. A lot of people put women down who are confident. That's another reason a lot of women don't stand up for themselves. Because they are called all sorts of nasty names. We all know that. For saying no, for standing up, for having boundaries, for being confident. Don't fall for that trick. It's just a trick. Confidence is essential as uh, for, for everybody. 
Arrogance? No. Haughtiness? No. Trying to push someone down? No. That's what a lot of powerful people try to do to you because they just don't know any other way to operate. Helpless, hopeless. They are the hopeless ones. Because remove the power, they are gone. Remove the power structure and say, hey, I have dignity. You cannot treat me like that. They are gone. They're, it's like poof. It's, a, it's a, a castle in the air that's just vanished. That's how powerful truth and authenticity is. So don't get caught up in the castles in the air and the confirmation from society that, hey, you are being so sacrificial, such a generous woman or man you are. Don't fall for that. You own your life. Build confidence, build self-esteem, get it from right sources. Build it from right sources. That is what? From within you. Don't look for outside. What's, what's shown everywhere outside is the same patterns that you have been fed bullshit. Look at yourself. Look within yourself. Even if you see emptiness, keep asking, who is it that's truly me? Because I want to live that authentic life. Authentic life. Truth, honesty, integrity. I want all of that. Because the true freedom comes from all these. And this freedom comes from within. What's outside is trapping us. The goal is to trap us. Don't fall for the shiny, beautiful, scientific or even cultural articles and things that you're exposed to on a daily basis. Don't fall for them. Figure them out for yourself as to what helps you, what doesn't help you. And remove everything that doesn't help you from your mind and body and, and your media. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. You deserve it. So this is the first step to healing. To realize that I deserve it. I deserve to be healthy. To be in healthy company. To be happy. So uh, this is a idea of how I wanted to... I wanted to put it in two separate videos of how different trauma and healing can be but I think it, it just happened like this that they both came in the single video but it's good because you also need to be able to connect how that connects with healing and how empowerment comes from and it's a good thing to be in the same video again I'm just uh, recording as per whatever comes with the flow I'm not the kind of person who goes with structure because I know that whatever comes out in the stream of consciousness is fitting in well with what I'm trying to do with this channel. So I'll go with that. I trust my intuition. So I go with this flow. And think over it. Watch this video over and over again if you need. Pick out those trauma patterns. Try to look at them. Recognize them. First thing is to look at them. And recognize and acknowledge that they exist. Because that is what is driving you towards toxic people. And toxic patterns and relationships. Once you see it and recognize it and acknowledge it, there is no going back. Somewhere there, there will come a point where you are finally seeing, so what do I do about it? So other videos and other channels, there are other people, whoever you find connection with will help you through that. Maybe you will be lucky enough to find a therapist who actually knows what they are doing when it comes to toxic behavior patterns like this, which is extremely <laughs> rare. Maybe if you are lucky. You will find something, but you have to look for it. You have to be conscious about, I want to be empowered. I want to be free. So, remember that you deserve this. What happened before doesn't have to define you. But you need to heal them, yes. Healing is dirty. It, 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 blinks, it brings a lot of stress, tears, blood, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of sweat and blood. Tears, lots and lots of tears. But better than being broken and lost, trapped, not knowing what is happening, constantly living in survival. So think about it. See what your own traumas have been. Look at those patterns and pay attention to them. That's the first step. 